On a previous video, I was talking about um, social media and the things to kind of watch out for, being a good example, being a light, those kinds of things. Um, and that kind of, in a way, spawned this one. Um, and that's, I think, it's a kind of important to look at the idea of Christians and arguing, uh, especially in the in the modern kind of world. There's this idea that um, that Christians should be engaging in um, in arguments. Now, I, I want to kind of clarify what I'm talking about. I'm talking about like you know on Facebook or something where you have like this guy says something or posts something and so you post like a rebuttal and then they post a rebuttal and then you post a rebuttal and it goes on and on and on and on and neither party learns anything neither party grows neither party you know challenges their belief they've already decided not to listen to what the other person has to say and they're just kind of getting into it for the sake of trying to look smart or for the sake of you know, um, making the other person feel like an idiot or validating their beliefs or whatever, whatever the cause, it has a very similar outcome of two people in a heated discussion with no positive outcome. And that's kind of what I'm talking about, um, especially with the rise of uh, theology and uh, apologetic books, which I, I'm not I'm not discounting that, but there's kind of this. Um, theory that's going along with it that um, we should be, you know, um, going chasing people around, arguing with them about stuff. And there's so much that could be said here, and I'm trying to keep my 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 comments short. But let's just let's look at this. There's kind of this idea. Let me move this. It, uh, it, there's kind of this idea going around that if I have all the right answers that I'll be able to change people and, and all those kinds of things. Here's the thing. People don't change people. And, I mean, like, in a church, for instance, the pastor preaches and he cares for the people and those kinds of things, but the pastor doesn't change the congregation, and it's not his job to change the congregation. That's kind of a, a big point. That's actually something that the Holy Spirit does. See, another thing that Christians try to do is they try and um, condemn people and you know convict them in those kinds of things and they try to do the work of the holy spirit but here's the thing the holy spirit works in someone's heart and he does the work and i mean imagine this that there are people people out there who do die and go to hell which means that for whatever reason god was either unwilling or unable or whatever to save them and you think that by you having all the right answers and just being, you know, good enough by yourself, you're going to be able to win people in a situation where they wouldn't even listen to God. And you think that you can take the place of God and the Holy Spirit and lead them into this, oh, I, I, I'm a bad person. I need to repent and all these things. Let's just stop and think about that for a second, about the level of arrogance that you have to think that you are above the master. Okay. God, you failed to bring this person to repentance, but I can succeed where you failed. Just the amount of amount of um, just arrogance in that statement. Now, I, I'm not saying we shouldn't be witnessing to people and interacting with those kinds of people. Absolutely, absolutely. But there comes a point when somebody has to make the decision for themselves about whether or not to believe or to disbelieve, and you can't force them to accept belief in Jesus. And that's kind of worth mentioning. If I have all the right answers, like Lee Strobel, he was an atheist who got saved. Well, there's, once again, a bigger picture there that, yes, yes, um, having answers does help. However, um, even Lee Strobel's books, they, they do more for strengthening people who are already in faith, or at least curious, more so than they do persuading people who are not religious if that kind of makes sense yes there are of course the 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 individual cases but not really there, that's kind of just the exception to the rule usually there's something else going on and that's because of this faith is caught and then taught see people don't you know, in, in America, I'm talking about in America, there, there are different differences for every place in the world that you are, absolutely. But in America, um, faith is more so caught than taught. People are, are, are really tired of hearing everybody have their own opinions and how telling them how they should live their life for no reason. 
Why? Why should I believe that Christianity is the right answer? Why should I believe? And then they see this disconnect between what we say and what we do. In church, for instance, you see a lot of people backbiting each other. You see a lot of people um, who are uh, who are not uh, happy in life. They're not content in life. That they're they're looking for more. They're not satisfied. And then they're getting in fight, fights with people, gossiping and all this stuff. And then you say, okay, yes, you need to accept this. And the person looks at that and they say, why? Why do I have to accept that? Um, I don't. I don't want to be associated with gossips. I don't want to get caught in these little groups. I don't want to. I don't want to be be in, in a club where I have to dress the right way to be accepted, where I have to be perfect to be accepted. You know, those kinds of things. People don't like it when you rub it in their face all the time. You're going to hell. Now. See, this is the point where the religious people are going to say, well, I'm just telling it like it is. Well, I remember Jesus coming, and I don't remember Jesus trying to scare people into accepting him. It is true that he did talk about the end times. He talked about a lot of different things. But you don't really see him trying to scare people so much as trying to lead people to the truth and, and trying to um, pe get people to not be scared. That's a complete 180 from what we see nowadays where evangelists, for instance, will use like the book of Revelation, for instance, to try and scare the crap out of people. It's not actually working and it's not doing anything, but yet Christians are still hell-bent on doing it. And maybe we need to consider that um, if we really want to have an impact on people, we have to walk the talk. And in that way, faith, faith – sorry, faith, not faith. <laughs> faith is caught. When people see that you genuinely care about them, when you engage with them on a personal level, that shows God. That shows God to them, and it, and it shows them something. And not to say that you know they're just ignorant morons, and that's, that's not what I'm saying. But when they see something that's real, that's different. That's different. Um, action persuades people. You know, it's easy to say, oh, all this stuff about Jesus and everything. Where's your love? Where's your love? Are you feeding the homeless? Are you doing anything for for these problems? Or, or, or are you just going to church once a week and then acting like you're better than me? See what I mean? And, and I think that a lot of times people see that disconnect between arrogance and pride and, and those kinds of things. And because they deal with it so much, even the people who are genuine, they just kind of write it off. Um, these are things that, that are worth they're, – they're worth, they're worth thinking about, you know. Um, Anyways, see, the, the problem is, is that a lot of Christians act like they have all the answers. I tell you what, if you think you have all the answers, you're not reading the Bible. Because there's a lot of things that I just don't understand. And there's always that struggle between being assured of our faith, being, being, being confident in our faith, and then struggling with our doubts. There's, there's always that, that, that back and forth pull. And there's this idea that if you if you join Christianity, all your problems will go away, and you'll never have any hard times. It's like that's just that's just trash. That's just not true. I don't understand, you know, why God does some stuff, why He doesn't do other stuff. Let me go, going back to what I said at the beginning, is God is God unable to save everyone? Is He unwilling to save everyone? And, I mean, not even Christianity is united in this. Some people believe, yes, some people were created for the purpose of going to hell. Uh, these are Calvinists. Well, to different degrees. So not all Calvinists believe that. Um, but it's more of a rhetorical argument if you just take aside the thing itself. And then there's the Arminists, or uh, Arminists who say, um, you know, no, it has nothing to do with God's ability. It's just that he's not going to force hand because of free will. So you have like these these two arguments, and Christianity isn't even like joined together. They, they argue amongst themselves about this, and that's a difficult question. You know, so are you saying that uh, are the Armenians saying that God that that our free will trumps God's power? And then they would say, well, no, we're not saying that. And then you turn to the Calvinist center and you're saying, so you're saying that God, who supposedly loves us, created some of us to go to hell you know and you have these these are big questions 
And I feel like a lot of times we as Christians will just simply dismiss these hard these hard questions. We won't stop and think about it. We won't wrestle with it. You know, there's some things that I've been wrestling with my entire life and not understanding. And you know what? That's okay. It really, it's okay. You don't, you don't have to have all the answers. But there's some Christians who, who will act like God has given me special knowledge, special wisdom. I know all things. And it's like, that's just nonsense. You don't know all things. You know, it's like even the prophets latched onto this when they said, who who can know the mind of God? Or another another thing they said, who can go up to give God counsel? And who, you know, all these different things. And these are important things that even the prophets themselves, who God gave these big messages to, are still, you know, wrestling with these issues. And I feel like anything worth knowing or worth believing is worth struggling through that belief. You know, sometimes Christians believe, okay, I have resolved this issue in my mind. Therefore, because I have resolved it in my own mind, that should be good enough for you. You need to take it as I've packaged it for you. But life and faith, it's not that simple. It's this constant tug of war between what is knowable and what isn't. And this constant wrestle with 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 the big issues. Does God, you know, all this stuff that, that, that we can't know and can't understand about God. Like, for instance, a core idea of Christianity is the Trinity. Three persons, one God. How does that actually work? See what I mean? And there's a lot of a lot of analogies that, that people use. Okay, it's like an egg, for instance. You know, you've got the shell and the yolk and the white. Okay, all right. But the difference being that each of those parts has to be completely the egg. And so then we get to these different things, and these analogies are all kind of falling short, but we still believe in this thing that's very difficult to understand, um, if impossible to understand. And, you know, and I don't know why we're surprised. I mean, there's things in the natural world that we have a really hard time understanding. Um, physics, for instance, you know, uh, all these different things where there's a lot of things that we don't even necessarily really understand. Like DNA, for instance, there's a lot of stuff with DNA that we have no idea what its purpose is. Um, is it an effect of evolution or does it do something or we don't, you know, we just don't know. There's actually a very small part of DNA that we actually understand. And, you know, that's just an example from the natural world. And maybe someday we'll understand it more. Maybe we won't. I don't know. Um, you know, but then to say, okay, there's things that we can't understand with the natural world, but we can understand all things with the supernatural, with the, with the with with something that's beyond our natural senses. That's just foolishness. And I think that Christian Christians would do well to approach it with humility rather than pride, and to approach this with with an open um, understanding of of okay, I don't know all things. And I, I think that we would do well to do that. Um, and, and I hope that this is kind of getting across. Um, anyways, so faith is more caught and then taught. Arguments don't really save people. Um, arguments do good for working out faith when there's very little separating the two uh, belief systems. Like, for instance, a uh, Protestant arguing with a Protestant uh, would probably get along more, uh, be able to reach more of a mutual agreement than, let's say, a Protestant with a Catholic or a Protestant with an atheist. So you've got these these chasms of space in between that involve our personal history, um, our upbringing, um, you know, all these different experiences and encounters, these different struggles that we've gone through, and this forms this big this big um, um, chasm between us and the other person. And to just kind of ignore that, and you know that that's just that that's just in my opinion that's just one of the stupidest things you can do. Faith is not something you just argue people into believing the truth. Like, okay, well I'm assured of what I believe, therefore you have to believe me. What? What? That just doesn't make sense. Faith is caught and then taught. You have to impact people walk out what you say that you believe and then it kind of opens people up to the to the possibility of listening to you uh, I'll, 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 I will challenge you do this every single day for the next 30 days post on Facebook your own opinions very 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 much so uh, about um, uh, things that go against the grain like for instance post things like homosexuality is wrong 
uh, you shouldn't uh, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do this for 30 days straight, and I guarantee you your audience will dwindle. And let, the only people who will still be on board are people who already agree with you. Going back to the example of homosexuality, in today's culture in America, uh, homosexuality is, is a commonly accepted thing. Um, there are still some who, you know, obviously there's the religious um, who disagree with it. And then there are the people who are just um, don't like change. Then there's the people who um, are, are just kind of um, prejudiced or whatever. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, now, I believe that homosexuality is wrong. Um, the same as I believe that child molestation is wrong. Um, but that's kind of off the point. Uh, my point being, well, I'm kind of getting off topic. The truth is that if you if you believe that homosexuality is not is not wrong, and you want to and then you post something about that, and all your friends who believe that homosexuality is, is not wrong are going to say, "Hey, good on you," then the people who you know just they don't really want to be judgmental or whatever, or they just kind of want to stay out of it, they won't comment anything. And then the people who are against it, they'll try and argue with you at first, but all for the most diehard argument arguers are going to just eventually just stop commenting because you get what I'm saying because there's just going to be this this chasm that you're making wider and wider because now along with how everybody has this chasm that I was talking about now there's a chasm between specifically you and them and uh, you know I, I I just want to kind of emphasize this as Christians we're supposed to be tearing down walls sorry I'm just got really itchy that my my mustache here. Um, as Christians, we're supposed to be, you know, not putting up walls, not putting up chasms, but all the time we are. You have to be Republican to be Christian. You have to vote for Trump if you're a Christian. You have to, I mean, all these different things that we're making the list of, of, the, of how you get saved, you know, a mile long, when the truth is all that you have to do to get saved is believe in Jesus Christ. That's it. You don't have to be this or that or, you know, all these different things, but we've made it in America where you have to be white, you have to be... Uh, middle class, you have to be uh, Republican, you have to vote for Trump. I mean, there's just this this big list. That, I mean, it's a common understanding that if you follow Jesus, you hate Obama. And it's like, oh boy. So now you've got this bigger chasm because people think that they, they equate all of it together. And so now you put up more barriers to people accepting Jesus because you were very highly opinion, opinionated about something that really genuinely doesn't matter. For instance, let, let's just, let's just kind of Roll with me on this, okay? Let's say 100 years from now, America is not a nation anymore. It's a wasteland from nuclear warfare or something like that, and that uh, women's rights are no more. Uh, let's say uh, there was this big jihad, for instance. Just roll with me on this. And, and uh, Islamic extremists have taken over the world, and there's this one world power of, 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 the, um, of Muslims. Okay, all right. Let's just roll with me on this, okay? I, I'm not going to into conspiracy theories. This is just a what if. So you got this this big situation here, and women no longer have rights. So that would mean all this stuff that we were doing for our kids, you know, so that our daughters will will be able to have have this freedom would have been a complete waste of time. See, we don't know what what, what tomorrow brings and all this stuff. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff here that we're just kind of overlooking, and we're trying to say that this is this this chasm. You have to, you have to pass this chasm to know my God. I have made this chasm, and now I'm making it bigger, plus your own chasm, so we have both of our chasms meeting, and I'm actually adding to the chasm, and I'm saying that's the chasm that you have to cross. You have to come to me to know my God, so that then maybe after you have come across this, after you've conformed to what I think, after you've come and known my God, then maybe you will have experienced it for yourself, and then you can know, the, know that you know the truth. It's like, what? Does that even make sense? So I'm not going to put forth any effort to cross that chasm to you, but you have to cross that chasm to me when I'm the one who's trying to convince you to, to accept my belief system. That just doesn't make sense. So having all the right answers, you know, when you get into arguments with people, there, there's a numerous problems with that. Okay, okay. Let, let's say, for instance, you are able to answer all their, all their questions, which... Realistically, if you're talking to somebody on social media, that's not going to happen. If you are talking to uh, an atheist or an agnostic online, that's not going to happen. 
But let's say hypothetically you do have all the answers. Okay, you have all the right answers too. You don't mess up at all. You don't misunderstand at all. Any of those things. Okay, all right. Okay. First off, if you're unconcerned for the person, that erects walls. See, people don't care how much you know until they until they know how much you care. And a lot of times Christians go into this with Christianity is the belief in America we are Christian. This is the way you have you have to believe and accept. And we, we make it a requirement for them to have our morals and our belief system before we can engage in conversation with them. That's just silly. That's just silly. It, it just doesn't make sense. So having all the right answers, being, being unconcerned for the person, that erects walls. Having all the right answers but being hateful and rude. Oftentimes it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Okay, so I, I, I believe in Jesus, and, and now you should too, you big idiot. Okay, I'll be sure to hop on that, that bandwagon. One of the biggest tragedies is the American Christian who has made it a requirement to go through all these hoops to become a Christian and has put forth no effort into changing, no effort into being a Christian and expects everybody else to just be Christian. I'm not going to love you. I'm not going to serve you. I'm going to revolve my life around myself, my comfort level, and then I'm going to expect you to just accept that and then to join me in my belief system. That is just the height of arrogance and stupidity. You have to have concern for the person. You can't be hateful or rude. It's like this. The, the prophets, they didn't just have the words of God. They spoke with the heart of God too. The, the, there, there's a big difference there. First Corinthians talks about this when it says, you know, if I speak with the tongues of angels, if I can move a mountain with my words, these are big things, okay? But if I have, if I don't have love, then it, it's pointless. And yet we're trying to go and argue with people to try and get them to accept our belief system with all those different hangups. And we're, we're making it their fault that they're not accepting. Wow. Wow. There is literally no thought process being a process going into this. And then third off, being condemning or judgmental. Here's the thing. We forget that we as Christians, we're still not the pick of the litter. It's Jesus Christ who has sanctified us, who has justified us. We get a little bit too big for our britches and we say, okay. Because I have been saved, now I'm a good person. Yes, God does change you, but make, make, make no mistake. You, without God, are just the same. The only thing that has made a difference in your life is that Jesus has redeemed you. Not because you deserved it or because you ever would deserve it. And nothing you ever do will make you better than someone else. Just because God has decided to adopt you as his heir does not mean that somehow you have a one-up on somebody else. And that includes skin differences, that includes character differences, that includes political differences, financial differences. There's a lot of things there that, that no, just no. Having all the right answers but being unconcerned for people People, being hateful and rude, being condemning or judgmental, th these are things that are, will erect walls. And having all the answers will count for nothing. But then there's even another dimension to this. People who you argue with, usually, number one, they already have decided what to believe. That's the biggest thing you're going to see. You're going to argue with people and they're going to argue with you. You have both already decided what you're going to believe. You both already decided not to listen to what, to what the other person has to say. Number two, the person who argues online usually just wants to be heard or they want to vent or whatever. They don't actually want to exchange ideas and question their own and, 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 and those kinds of things. Um, really, online doesn't isn't the greatest place for that to happen. But even being – think about if you were to talk to somebody face-to-face -face like you talk to them online. Or if they were to talk to you the way you talk to talk to them online. Well, I'm just telling it how it is. Okay, imagine somebody walks up to you and says, Hey, well, you just said that was completely retarded. What are you, a moron? How can you believe something so stupid? See what I mean? Like, right off, you'd be, you'd be on your guard, and 
you'd be very defensive and you'd be very irritated and you would you would you would not listen to them just to spite them so now you are without any tact trying to witness to somebody when proverbs says that the wise person makes knowledge acceptable it makes it acceptable well you're just trying too hard to be, you're just being a people pleaser being wise is not a bad thing see the problem is we get our pride mixed up in it and we love ourselves and our arguments and the sounds of our voice more than we actually like loving people and that's kind of on us and then the next thing is people who, who argue especially online will never admit that they're wrong even if you prove beyond a doubt if you give all the evidence that they need if you answer every single question even if you do it perfectly here's the thing people online don't admit that they're wrong and conversations don't really end cordially especially when it's unasked for you know when somebody states their opinion i think that president trump was a good president okay and then somebody hops on they're not asking for an opinion they're just simply sharing their opinion so then you go on and say you're an idiot trump's an idiot da, 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 da. well i think that you might have just you know shot yourself in the foot you know maybe chewed off your nose to spite your face and it's just like eh maybe there are other and better ways to go about things like that um maybe instead of just flaunting your own opinions maybe you could ask them theirs why do you think he was a good president oh i understand so how do you feel about this you know engaging them in conversation versus you're an idiot you know and it's just like there's a lot of that going around today where it's like I, i'm not going to even listen to what you have to say and yet i'm going to decide that you're an idiot and because you don't agree with me that that makes you automatically wrong because i'm 100 percent wrong and you're i mean 100 percent right and you're 100 percent wrong that's just not how it goes listening to people that's first off listen more than you talk and remember that the anger of man doesn't produce the righteousness of god listen and stay calm listen and then love now, love is not something that you necessarily always feel. It's something that you do. If I say I love my wife, but I cheat on her, is that accurate? No, it's not. Well, I do love her. I have feelings for her, but I also have feelings for this other woman and for this other woman. And, eh, see what I mean? That's not really love. Um, love is an action. Okay, so if we say that we love God, but we don't obey him, we don't show his love, then do we really when if we say that we have that we love god but yet we don't forgive our brothers and we don't st stop gossiping we don't uh we don't try to try to restore people and try to build people try to encourage people do you really think that you're loving people well i i have a good feeling when i go to church that's not loving people that's enjoying a, a, an activity so listen to people love people serve people that means put them above you put their needs above your own put their desires above your own put them over you treat them like they're more important than you are treat people with honor with respect with love serve them don't be afraid to to look like a fool you know what i mean if anybody has to has to be wrong let it be you let it be you what does that matter what does it matter if, if you look like a real smart person, but you make them feel like garbage? What's the point? See, what, but a lot of times we have too much pride in, our, in us to allow us to change. So those things are much more effective than trying and arguing with people. And then there's also the obvious point that just because you are passionate about something doesn't mean it's actually that big of a deal. And just because you have an opinion on something doesn't mean that they have to accept your opinion. For instance, let's say that I think that the Democratic Party is corrupt. Is it important for me, for the person I'm talking to, to accept that opinion, that they have to conform to me? No. When I'm witnessing, I'm not trying to get people to conform to me, but to Jesus. But then also when I'm talking to people, it's good to have differences of opinion, especially about things that don't really matter. You know, like, for instance, for a long time I heard, you can't vote for anyone who is for abortion. And I absolutely hate abortion, so I, I'm not validating abortion. But then, so you can vote for someone who's corrupt, who's a murderer, who's, you know, uh, immoral, who does all these things, as long as they don't, as long as they say that they're, that they're against abortion. What if the value of life 
goes beyond simply abortion? What if I value life? And see, that that brings us into the whole problem of economics and socialism versus communi uh, um, um, capitalism. Oh my goodness, I'm, let, I'm not even going into that at all. But what I am saying is, uh, I think you know what I'm saying. And I, I feel like maybe at this point, if I continue talking about that, it'll just irritate people rather than hearing out the rest of what I have to say. So when people, when you genuinely care about people, that, that's going to make an impact. I would say more than anything else, avoid Facebook, YouTube, and social media comments and arguments. Just avoid them. But people need to know my view. I have the answer to all the world's problems. Okay, sure you do. But in the meantime, just, just avoid it. You don't always have to say something stupid. Well, I think it's important. Okay, all right. All right. Just keep in mind that you're continually narrowing your uh, your pool of people who will listen to you. Um, it's it's too easy to misunderstand over text. It's too easy to misunderstand over social media. You don't have facial expressions. You don't have the tone of voice. You don't have the body language. And then you're saying, hey, yeah, you have to accept this. And it's, eh. it's just too easy for misunderstandings. Things can sound arrogant. Things can sound um, kind of poorly thought out. Misspellings can make you seem like a, a moron. I mean, let's just, it's too easy to misunderstand. Next off, there's these things, professional arguers. Literally, these people, it's like they have no job or no hobby. They just roam around YouTube and Facebook and start arguments. Now, they're not always trolls. Sometimes they just do it to get the gospel of the agnostics or the gospel of the atheists or whatever their belief system is out there just to tear people down or whatever. I don't know, whatever. Just to validate themselves? I don't know. Be careful for this. You will never, ever, ever persuade them. You can give them 100 answers, and it will not be enough. And they will not stop until they run into something that you don't know. Or if they don't ever run into something that you don't know, they'll just trip o they'll they'll reword the things that you say and they'll just turn it into an argument that never ends. It's a complete waste of time. Then there's a the thing about atheists and agnostics. Now I want to give special warning about this because here's the thing. Most people who call themselves either atheists or agnostics online really don't know what they actually believe. For instance, I heard an atheist the other day saying that atheism was not being sure if there was a god or not. No, that's agnosticism. And then I hear a lot of agnostics who say, I'm not an atheist, uh, I'm an agnostic. And it's like, well, if you don't believe... Agnostic is kind of like an in-between phase. You will either eventually become religious or eventually become atheist. Unless you just don't think about things, which is mostly impossible. You will eventually lean one way or another. It's impossible to stay on the fence for forever. And then, uh, so ag agnostics. With this, is, a lot of times people say, "Okay, I, I just don't. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm looking for for some proof." So you give them proof, and they say, "Well, that's not good enough." Well, here's the thing. There's this thing called hyper skepticism. What that means is that you're not just skeptical. You're overly skeptical. You demand you demand more proof than is actually possible. You demand demand more proof for the existence of God than you do for the existence of people, or for the existence of aliens, or for whatever. There, more, more. You demand more evidence from Christians than there is to support evolution. Now that's saying something, and really, honestly, you're gonna waste your time with arguing with with with, with this. Really, honestly, the best way, honestly, uh, uh, stay out of arguments. If you're friends with people, yeah, engaging in in in, in those kind of, in dialogues and fine, absolutely. But don't go up to random strangers and start. Just drop it. Move on. Um, Another thing that agnostics do is they say, I just don't believe that there's a God. Well, then you're an atheist. See, atheism is the belief that there is no God or the lack of belief in a God. It, it's, a, it's a whole thing with rhetoric. To them, it's this really big distinction, but in, in, in truth, it's, it's almost – there's almost no difference. Um, and then agnosticism is where you don't think there's sufficient – uh, proof to believe or to disbelieve. That's the most broad and simple definition you can possibly get. Um, really, and, and when I say when I say atheist agnostic are not going going to go anywhere, I mean the conversation is not going to go anywhere because most people online who call themselves agnostics are actually atheists. They've decided that there that there cannot be proof for God and that God cannot exist. 
well, if you've pre if you've pre decided that decision, you know, pre predisposed, pre um, pre formed an opinion of that of that bias, that's going to have an effect on any information that you that you gather. And then when you when you say, okay, I'm going to be hyper skeptical about anything religious, but anything else, I'm going to believe without any skepticism or with limited skepticism. That's very unhelpful. You know, like you see people doing this with with the Bible too. Well, well, the Bible uh, is full of contradictions. Okay, no, it's not, and here's all the answers to those things. Well, those answers aren't good enough. Well, that's more of your own hangup than anything. Really, honestly, you're you're not going to be the savior of the world. You're not going. Honestly, your job is not to try and get everybody to um, to believe. And no matter how many how much you argue with people, you won't get them to change their opinion. There will be the one random conversation where somebody is is not as adamant. They're more curious or on the fence. But even if you look at like Lee Strobel, his wife, his wife got saved, and then he started on this hell bent, you know, raging and all this stuff. But the truth is that if his wife wouldn't have gotten saved, chances are he wouldn't have. I know that's a hard pill to swallow, but it's that personal contact of Christianity. When somebody does you wrong and you turn the other cheek, when somebody treats you unfairly and you say, that's okay, when there's a global pandemic like coronavirus and you say, I'm at peace still, when and, and I'm not saying just say it, I mean when you actually are at peace, when, when there's different political things that are going on and you say, you know what, my trust is not in, in, in princes. Everybody trusts in something. Everybody believes in something, um, regardless of whether it's yourself or, or, or money or, or you know whatever. The, the society, the culture, the government, everybody believes in something. And uh, well, anyways, with that being said, there's a lot of Christians who have this idea. If I don't combat agnostics, if I don't combat atheists, atheists that they're going to take over the culture. Well, here's the thing. No, they're not. Atheism and agnosticism will never be the dominant uh, in the world, and I'll tell you why. First off, um, religion has too many positive effects. Um, longer lifespans, for instance, uh, lower suicide rates. Um, another thing is that you see as the church, it's become less common for people to claim Christianity. Um, it has still become just as common if not more common for people to claim religious like for instance going back to their pagan roots or uh, getting into occultic behaviors like um, uh, seances and those kinds of things um, and then another thing is most most atheists and agnostics are formed from poor poor experiences with religious people it's dependent on religion see because it's more of a reaction against religion and against the religious than it is so much a a opinion of what the human desire what the human heart actually desires so with that being said my point being this arguing is not going to do anything it's just going to reaffirm reaffirm their belief that you are a bigot and that you're not listening and that you don't love them which would they be wrong and uh, if you really want to impact people love them if you really want to impact people make time for them listen to them be genuine. Like like I said at the beginning of, the, of this of this of this this video, there are a lot there are lots of things that I I'm just not sure. I don't understand. I don't understand God's processes or God's reasoning. And you know what? I'm not alone. There's a there's a there's a prophet in the book in the Bible called Habakkuk, and there was a bunch of just immoral things happening. Saying, God, why aren't you doing anything about this? That people injustice is just everywhere. Nobody's doing the right thing. And then God said, okay, well, just to let you know, there's this big, there's this empire that's coming in called the Babylonians, and they're going to take over, and they're going to uh, conquer. And he says, hold up, pause, God. Uh, you must have misspoke there, because uh, the Babylonians, they're, they're wicked people. They're more wicked than us. So we are unjust. We're, we're immoral, but they are amoral. Uh, you must be mistaken. And then God says, no, I'm not. These are all the things that they're doing wrong. They're, they are way worse than you. Absolutely, but I, yeah, they are gonna. I am gonna use them to conquer you guys. And Habakkuk was 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 he didn't understand, and he even said that he said, "This can't be right." But I'm still going to wait on you, and how you're going to reprove me, how you're going to to um, 
to disprove my claim? How are you going to 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 show me that that I, I'm I'm the problem is not with your righteousness, but with my understanding of your righteousness? And uh, just I don't think that Christians are aware how much how much doubt is a process of faith, and how much. The battle of faith is in, in the Bible. I mean, you look at another prophet, Jonah, who thought that his religion was only for his people, that everybody else should die and go to hell. And then God says, shouldn't I care for all the people? Plus, they have a bunch of animals there too, and you want me to just wipe them all out without even giving them a chance? And... I've had en enemies where I I've had enemies before where I felt like that like yeah God wipe them out they're not good like me you know and it's like oh there's that pride so I hope that this that this video was help helpful for you uh, consider these things before you go into an arguments and uh, really think about the long term effects about the different things that you say.